So that the theoretical insights are supplemented with things that will hopefully help them become more autonomous as teachers at the end. That's to say that they are in a position to make the right decisions for their own classes as regards a general approach to the learning teaching environment. <coughs> so um, what we'll be doing today is that, first of all, I give you an overview over the framework to which these uh, portfolios were used. And then subsequently, Jochen is going to talk in some detail about the new course design that we developed last winter, where the portfolio served as a cornerstone for our work, so that it was meant to assure that certain functions were fulfilled. So that basically, we tried to make sure that there was systematic diagnosis at the beginning, and then following that stage, we try to collaboratively and individually develop plans for learning. Then we'll talk about documentation of learning processes very briefly. And then finally talk about self-assessment and also the role of counseling, where we um, try to establish systematic counseling for the students to start, both within the classroom and outside. Then, Last but one step ought to be that we take a look at some quite tentative data that we extracted from the portfolios which we selected after the first term where we used them. Um, where we will be taking a look at student achievements in those courses, but also at the development of their attitudes towards learning environments. So to which extent did they reflect on their own learning within the classroom? And finally, we will report very briefly once again on some more recent developments where we try to extend the use of portfolios um, across the curriculum almost at Brunswick University so that it is no longer limited to just one type of practical English class but will be applied in other courses as well. To start with, um, at Brunswick University, students encounter the field of applied linguistics in their second year of learning. So that they need to take the module entitled Introducing Second Language Acquisition, English Language Teaching, where they take two lecture courses, one in the winter term, which is entitled Foundations of SLA, Second Language Acquisition, so that here they come across the overwhelming evidence that supports some more student-centered and student-controlled classroom scenarios as well. In the summer terms, they need to take another lecture course on the foundations of ELT, where they, among other things, are familiarized with practical approaches to teaching classes in more learner-controlled ways, where, among other things, of course, I mean, we also have things such as flu, etc. Um, they will, however, be uh, in, in intense discussion also of the scenario that we're focusing on here, and that is to say the autonomous classroom, where the learner takes over responsibility for every single aspect, for all the relevant decisions. <coughs> the problem that we're facing with the discussions of learner autonomy have been reported to you repeatedly. Learners will typically be fascinated by the approach, I, I mean, when I say learners, I mean our learners, students at this at university. Um, they will be fascinated by the approach. Among other things, we'll be showing that videos um, with some classroom uh, examples. Um, and they will also be convinced that the approach has its theoretical merits in a way. But as regards practical implementation in their own future lives, they tend to remain somewhat skeptical. So that they have reservations that we talked about a lot yesterday. Uh, for instance, very frequently they will refer to the constraints of the syllabus that will be used in certain schools 
where typically these syllabi are often still very traditional. So that they feel um, that in a way they can't make autonomy work in a real life context in school. Uh, similarly, the washback effects of a uh, backwash effect of sample exams is pretty high, so that they feel insecure as regards the outcomes of learner autonomy. Will they prepare their pupils well enough so that they can compete with other pupils who have been trained, instructed, or traditionally? Okay, against that backdrop, we felt it was really necessary for them to experience autonomy themselves in one of our own practical language classes. And that was a class that is also part of the module, entitled Language Skills for Language Teachers, where in small groups, the, the students are meant to become more proficient in English so that they will work on English grammar, vocational English, but also lexis, etc. Um, the module ends with the final written exam, so that in the end there will be a test of both their uh, applied knowledge concerning applied linguistics, but also regarding their proficiency levels in English, where we'll be referring to that exam later on to as the module final of the whole course, where of course the focus will only be on the section where the skills were in fact being tested. Um, as you guys know, of students involved, there are some 270 to 300 students who are taking the module per year, so that class sizes in the lecture groups is enormous, whereas in the language skills we're working in comparatively small groups, that's to say between 25 and 30 students on average. Okay, as regards the skills courses, there is normally a syllabus where the students are meant to systematically familiarize themselves with tools or resources that they need in order to become more proficient in English. So that in a way, the course has always been designed in a quite open manner, so that there was no linguistic content that was used as a backbone for structuring the whole course. We would look, for instance, at some comprehensive grammar books, we would look at dictionaries and ways in which the information in them could be exploited and critically uh, analyzed. Uh, we would be using the electronic tools, etc., 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 on the basis, of course, of linguistic problems that the learners themselves were meant to detect. So, in theory, the course structure looked very much like this in the past. In practice, however, things were slightly different. As early as in the first session, when we came up with such a loose agenda, the students would demand certain grammar topics, especially, but also vocabulary fields to be covered. So that very frequently, after intense negotiation, a schedule was then arrived at that didn't really reflect individual needs any longer, but rather came up with some grammatically structured course. So that in addition to those study skills that we originally intended to work on, we also had a few grammar points in the agenda that we would work on. Um, if it had just been that, uh, it wouldn't be so problematic maybe in the end. What was also the case, however, was that the students with such an agenda uh, developed a very consumer-like attitude so that the teacher was meant to like, sort of stand and deliver. Um, very frequently we had like whole group discussions where only a few students would be contributing actively um, and it would in fact be finally the teacher who would substantiate or accept certain answers as correct. They were working on more or less traditional assignments in these classes. So the teacher was the dominant figure still. Um, and also when we tried with collaborative arrangements, well, they were meant to work on assignments independently, they seemingly felt so insecure that they still wanted their guesses to be checked and substantiated by the teacher. And that is why in the end we made the decision to totally abandon that concept and go for something that is relatively different, which you obviously report on now.
speed up to the speed up a little bit. Um, it's not a problem if you can't read what we have on call, but just like all the, the titles, and this is why I just reviewed the portfolio, just as I talk, just like go through it and take a look at the highlighted passages that are, will just render things a little bit more transparent while I talk about it. Um, based on the problems that we encountered with uh, the, 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 the earlier class established, we thought we needed a new class to promote learn autonomy uh, successfully and thoroughly. And therefore, we created this very portfolio that we're going to look at right now. Five things were important for us. Give the learner means to diagnose individual weaknesses and strength, not a surprise. Also, assess competence in the L2, plan their coursework accordingly, um, document these steps that they took in strategies, and evaluate eventually. Aside from the portfolio, because it was part of all, um, the whole class language skills, uh, the language skills class was still not existing, we had to promote several ground rules that had to be covered. Um, so students were required to uh, form actually groups for in and out of uh, class preparation and work, and they were asked to consult each other, comment on learning strategies, and so on. Added to that, as you can see that uh, in the course description, regulations as well as in the contract, for example. Um, Additively, students were invited for a consultation, a counseling session with either the teacher or tutors. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. For the diagnosis, we used basically three steps. Um, the first one was meant to uh, self assessment of the general language skills using the categories and skills that were um, promoted in the common European framework. So that was step one. And secondly, you can see that on the seven pages in the handout. Um, they had to complete, complete the seven page questionnaire, questions and format that had adapted for materials by Lina Degenauer, um, and to make sure that students were reflecting on their preferred ways of learning. Basically, that was a two step session. First, they had to take a look at what the traits of a successful language learner are, basically, and secondly, for the same categories, categorize themselves. Added to that, they also to reflect on their communicative behavior and natural learning activities that they engage in. And um, the last cornerstone in those three steps that we took is the diagnostic tests. One was administered at the very first session of a semester and the other one at the very end. And they were basically structured by the module final that our students have to take 90 multiple choice and 20 filling items. Um, that focus on advanced grammar, reflecting on vocabulary, students' command of English, vocational English, and lexis. Students will, will be provided with what you see here, a complex uh, spreadsheet with which they would assess and evaluate and grade the test themselves. What is really nice about this test is that it not only gives an overall grade of whether you passed actually or failed, but it highlights um, some of the most important issues that we checked in the text, and it would mark some cutoff points in our exam. For example, if you passed lower than 50%, you would be told that revision of this particular topic is crucial. Uh, 50 to 70% um, revision is still necessary. If you pass between 70 to 90%, we still recommended some additional revision. The planning phase was basically structured um, after the second session, the students, based on those findings that they made in the diagnostic test, as well as based on the reflections about their learning strategies and learning behaviors, they would come up with a plan. We would also, in the second session, alert them to other ways of learning, um, more naturalistic activities, and how to exploit them most successfully to just like support the uh, activities that they did outside the classroom, which we could not control. To that extent. Um, finally, we also agree on a list of topics that we would um, deal with with the whole course and um, the relevant study skills that we associated with that were also put into perspective. This is what the students would basically put in the challenge I'm facing in my personal agenda space. The weekly schedule um, for all students outside the classroom included working on problems of their own choice or some agenda that we as a teacher and the class as a whole would have agreed on. For that, we asked our students to reserve 90 minutes per week.
added to that, we invited them, or strongly recommended, doing uh, additional language learning activities, um, which can imply, for example, reading newspapers, watching a movie, chatting online, and so on. But that is should, should set aside an additional four hours per week and also document that in the portfolio. Additional to that, we provided um, classroom materials, task sheets to work on via the electronic shared workspace system at Münster University, where students have access to a multitude of different uh, traditional but also more open, more open paths that were created by us in the semesters beforehand, or as well as um, additional classroom activities and additional classroom materials that were um, produced by peer students also for advanced language learners. Um, these materials could be accessed at home but were also worked on in the self access center at Minnesota University. Actually in class, we reserved very much time to group work sessions so that the students could um, basically follow the individual plans that I had made um, with their peers. Also, um, we would function more as a, in a form of a resource or counselor. Um, sometimes we deem it necessary to have some short uh, Q&A sessions when particular problems arise or some students actually found something out, a strategy or facing a problem that might be relevant for everybody. So there were special spots reserved for that. Also, um, yeah, I think I can speak that. Um, what has totally become clear is that we have the self-assessment part taking place constantly. <coughs> evaluation success, remark, uh, things like word, and so on. So the evaluation was not done in particular points, but all the times by the students uh, themselves, and it was documented in the portfolio. Um, the counseling that I just talked about a little bit earlier took part by the teacher and by tutors that were uh, prepared for that particularly. Um, we met at least once a semester for, again, at least 15 minutes giving the number of students that we just learned about, you can guess, an enormous time, uh, amount of time was actually invested in those individual counseling sessions, which then again, we use the portfolio to provide our learners with specific feedback to improve on their learning strategies, and so on. Okay. Um, now, with the portfolios, as I already told you, we collected them at the end of term so that we have a very, very rich database where learning processes, learning strategies, and also the exact amount of time, etc., spent on certain activities have been documented. Uh, it's so rich that we have just started analyzing it yet. And therefore, what we'll be concentrating on in this first very tentative evaluation of the project are two aspects, and these are, did the students make progress in the course? And to which extent can, we, can this be attributed to the new methods employed? And secondly, we'll be taking a look at student attitudes. Did we experience some change there? Did, to which extent did they welcome the new course design? And what did they consider helpful of these devices that we used in our classes? Well, data for the first question comes from the diagnostic tests and the module final which were all at the same difficulty level, used the same formats and same scoring procedures so that the results can be directly compared. With the second question, we used the questionnaire, some of whose questions I'm going to illustrate with the moment when we refer to specifically interesting uh, questions and findings. So to start with the student achievements, um, we were surprised that they made a lot of progress, even though we never really checked on that again. As can be seen, when comparing the results they obtained in the diagnostic tests at the beginning of term, DT1, at the end of term, DT2, and the module final that most of them took soon afterwards. So that both when getting their scores they achieved uh, and the grade levels that they achieved, they made a lot of progress. So, the score increase was about 15% in between the beginning of term and the end of term in a proficiency test. That's to say, we didn't test exactly the contents of the course, but their general proficiency levels. Um, and that 
the positive development seem to be going on so that in the one year final they even achieve better results than in the second diagnostic test. And what is even more noteworthy is that grade-wise, in the German grading system, on a scale of one excellent to six absolutely pathetic, they made progress corresponding to roughly one grade level. So that while on average they would have received something which is less than satisfactory, 3.64, in the module final they achieved something that is in between good and satisfactory on average. Um, that alone doesn't mean much. It just shows that instruction does in fact have an effect. It would be really bad if it hadn't. Um, what is more interesting then is the question, how did the other students perform? For instance, in the model final, that's to say, those who had received more traditional instruction or who had been, uh, that's to say, had been taught by colleagues of ours who didn't use the approach or by us ourselves in the previous past. And that is also quite interesting, because here, if you compare the grades that the portfolio students achieved in the module final to all the other groups, uh, there is a striking difference, so that on average, the others would have received just a grade around three satisfactory in the German grading system. And as regards the pass and fail rate, the difference is even more dramatic. While our own classes only are a trained student failed. In the other classes, it was almost every fifth. So that our student experienced a lower risk of really not uh, passing, uh, of failing the exam. Um, and with the numbers given, I mean, if we had 112 students and 171 students from the so control group in inverted commas, um, we can really assume that this is quite um, yeah, <coughs> can be generalized. Um, we also did some significant testing on that, so that at least the fail rate is a highly significant difference in that respect. Um, moreover, if you take a look at the different grades achieved, where you here see with the uh, blue bars the distribution of grades in the control group, so that like 30% uh, or so received an excellent mark in the exam, if you compare that to the score, uh, grades our students got in the final exam, you will see that it also corresponds to a like, rapid movement to better grades, so that they obtain excellent or at least good grades in over 50% of all cases. Okay, um, I mean, this is still a very tentative conclusion. It may be attributable to other factors as we couldn't con um, control variables that might also play a role. But at least we would like to conclude that our students um, yeah, didn't um, um, suffer from what we did with them. <laughs> okay, I'm going to skip that. As regards, as we're running out of time already, um, as we got student attitudes, we used the questionnaire, as, you, uh, as said before, where one of them focused on the class in general and the perceived progress that the students had made, so that they were given a statement like, this course has helped me improve my general language skills, the most general question asked in the questionnaire, where they're meant to raise their progress with the five point scale ranging from double plus to double minus and a neutral value in the middle where you can see from um, this bar chart that our students on average um, consider the effect to be quite positive on them so that the vast majority rated it excellent or good plus double plus if you want to and only three students didn't see positive effects or at least neutral effects Okay, um, if we now go into more detail and take a look at the ways in which their language awareness and their own perception has changed, or their language, aware learning, language learning awareness, or their planning capacity, there are a few noteworthy um, observations to be made. So, for instance, one question asked them, this course has helped me become more aware of English grammar. 
the blue bars here give you the values for that question. So that 80, uh, 80 out of, if I remember correctly, 112 responses, uh, no, it was more, because we used it again in some term, the same question then. Um, so some 150 um, would consider the progress they had made as regards language awareness to be really tremendous. And only very few rated that neutrally. As regards language learning awareness and planning capacity, um, the picture was a little more mixed. So that while the average values still indicate that most students rather viewed that quite positively, they didn't view it as positively as the increased language awareness that they had made. And observed. Oh Jesus, that's my mobile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> we, we think that this observation, that the learning, uh, language learning awareness and planning capacity hadn't improved so much, may have to do with the fact that they are very advanced learners already, who had received nine years of instruction in school, plus one year at university, so that, as we guess, these processes may be um, in their own perception, they didn't learn as much. Um, final. Are we done? Some of them more than done. <laughs> okay. Final remarks um, regarding portfolios. Um, the students appreciated the methods we employed, especially the peer work in class, the collaboration with the teacher, but they hated the portfolios. <laughs> And also, so you know, things I like statements were very negative. Yes. And also, when we asked them a slightly different question, to which extent were the different tools employed helpful? The diagnostic test was welcomed. The feedback was welcomed. The questionnaire, yeah. But the portfolio wasn't considered helpful by most of them. Uh, we can only speculate what the reasons for that are. May have to do with the amount of time invested. So we received some feedback explicitly where students stated that they got tired of recording all their yeah. reading activities, viewing activities, etc. Um, and they also have to do with the fact that they were so aware already of all their learning strategies that um, some of the things that we wanted to achieve were, uh, for some of the learners at least, not very useful. We, however, also received very positive feedbacks in the comments that we received, and would like you to alert you to the fact that still some 35%, one third of our students, gave the portfolio positive ratings, both regarding their liking the activities involved with it, but also as regards its helpfulness. So that even among this highly advanced group of learners, there were some who felt that they benefited. I could show you some quotes from the um, student responses later on, but I mean, they clearly illustrate that at least some learners benefit from it. Finally, as indicated before, we tried and portfolio maybe across the university course curriculum, and this is what we go for. There are still a few hard nuts to crack, um, but yeah, we'll try that. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry.